Mass Effect Andromeda broke me. In fact, it broke all of my gaming habits. But still, I can't seem to get over it. Welcome back to Manda. I'm really struggling with Mass Effect Andromeda. And this is my fourth time I've sat down to complete it. And I still haven't to this day. I mean, what's wrong with me? I'm a Mass Effect content creator. I love Mass Effect. And yet I still haven't finished Mass Effect Andromeda. I can't quite put it down to what it is. When it first released, all the way back in 2017, I was hyped for it. And I played the Mass Effect trilogy more times than I can possibly imagine. So we have a brand new galaxy to explore, new characters to meet, and new adventures. So this is a Mass Effect fan's wet dream. What is when I, I sit here, I turn it on, ready to play for a couple of hours, get myself all hyped, gaming session ahead. I just look at the screen and go, I don't really want to. I can't seem to get the character model how I like. In the trilogy, my male character looks like me. I like to, you know, be inserting myself into that world. Some people do, some people don't. I get that. But for me, I enjoy it because I've been playing now for the best part of three or four hours. I just can't seem to get the character how I like. Ryder, always a pleasure. I hear you're assisting Major Salem Varn's investigation into Dr. Adam. You know Salem? <laughs> I met him once <laughs> Camera twice. Shy. A remarkable I've changed the hair, I've changed the shape of the face, I've changed the beard, and I just, I can't seem to connect with the character. Shepard was instant, it's a bam, just like that. But Ryder, it, it's, I don't know, I, I can't quite put my finger on it. And I like the idea of Ryder being a young, naive kid. You know, kind of dropped in the moment. Because it's aspects of yourself in the game as well you're going to a brand new galaxy you're learning new game the new mechanics just like riders learning you know the world around him so you're kind of experiencing the same feelings i'll have your skins uh everything's under control just a simple weapon malfunction <laughs> how are you what is this get cameras on the bed you're not like a veteran like shepherd was but there's just no, there's no connection there. People change, right? Who knows? Maybe even I can. And it's just a shame because I really want to. The combat's different. It breaks law, which really frustrates me. And I get that people don't want to play games over and over again, but I do. I enjoy going down a renegade path or switch it out and become a, a paragon or a vanguard and change it up to being a soldier next time and seeing how different powers work and seeing which combinations work. But how you can switch to having biotics and then not having biotics because some voice in your head can change your profile really annoys me. It, it, it's not possible in that universe. And I know it's just a convenient thing. It's a gameplay mechanic, but it still shouldn't be in there. I'm Sam a is another constant distraction, constantly telling freezing. you the temperature going to fall, temperatures are coming down, or the temperatures, temperatures are within up, or, acceptable parameters. Oh, the temperature's going to... Just shut up. I get it. I can see the little dial on my screen. It's fine. You do not have to tell me every 30 seconds. I like that the things to scan and you can pick up new information. But on the flip side, it makes things too easy. There was a side mission where I met a, a rogue AI original it could have actually been a nice little side quest that you could have a bit of a moral dilemma with is it a good ai or is it a bad ai but every time that the ai said something little sam in your head went yeah it's lying yep lying it's lying again and then there was a, a decision at the end do you kill the ai or do you save the angara well you already know from sam telling you that it's lied to you the whole conversation so it's just taken away your creative reasoning. You could have sat there and wondered, is it part of history or is it wanting to kill us all? But no, it's just saying the things that you need to know. And when the choice came out of it, it was like, well, we've already done that, isn't it? <laughs> and then there's the Sudoku puzzles. Oh my goodness. Whose idea was it to put stupid Sudoku puzzles in the game? Mass Effect's always had these little mini games. Yeah, you might run out of time on the annoying circuit board puzzle or get the combination wrong in the Mass Effect one with the door codes. But that's just it, trial and error. And it's doable within a couple of minutes. But Sudoku, 
I hate Sudoku. My brain just doesn't understand that you need one symbol in a box and you need another symbol in the line and they can't be the same symbol. And it's like, oh my goodness. Thankfully, we have the internet and I had all the answers to hand. And you can just look at the answers. You know, if you actually check uh, how long to beat games, it says playtime is about 25 hours for Mass Effect Andromeda. Completionists is 60 hours. So yeah, it's like 50 hours working out those stupid bloody Sudoku puzzles. I like the Tempest. It's a nice modern looking ship, but again, it doesn't feel like a proper working ship. The Normandy had NPCs walking all over the place and people at stations and the Tempest just got a pilot, a navigator, engineer. And that's it. It's that feeling of, of stepping into Shepard's shoes and that opening cutscene where the, you're walking towards the bridge and you're walking past all these people and all these Alliance soldiers and they're doing about their business and they're, they're looking at things and handing clipboards over and then on your way to the comms room you stop and you meet some of the crew and you have a chat with Jenkins and the doctor and, and it does feel like it's an actual working ship and you, know, you are just part of the crew and it, it it's Tempest is just lifeless. I mean, there are some good things. I mean, I like the Nomad. It is a very good vehicle to drive. How about we don't gun it down the icy mountain? Frustrating that it doesn't have a gun. But again, I like the fact that they incorporated that into the law. The Nomad is a civilian ship, so it wouldn't have a great big cannon on top of it. And it's really fun to drive. And I like you being able to customize it. Thankfully, I'm quite enjoying the jump jet. I mean, it took a while, I admit, but, you know, we actually enjoyed jumping up there and shooting while hovering. Yeah, it, it it's actually good fun. It's good a good gameplay addition. But I mean, I admit, when it first came out, I didn't quite enjoy it then, but it has grown on me. When it first released, it was full of bugs. Everyone knows it was full of bugs. And so I stopped playing, and I thought I'll give it a few months, let the bugs be patched out, and then I'll go back and play it. But that's how it broke me. Before, I would play a game through until I was completely finished with it or played enough that I knew that I never wanted to go back again. Since Andromeda, I'm just getting this bored feeling. I'll switch to something else and I've kind of taught myself that it's okay to do that and in a sense it is. If you're not happy and you're not enjoying something, then you shouldn't force your way through it. But on the flip side, nowadays it's very rarely that I actually finish any games. These days I've got about four or five games on the go. You know, and I'll just flip between them and then not actually finish them and I'll get bored and I'll start something else. It's frustrating, but I don't know how to break the cycle. So, against my own advice, I am actually going to force my way through playing Andromeda. I mean, I want to talk about it on the podcast and on the channel. And so I'm hoping that the story picks up a little and I'm hoping that I will actually enjoy it by the end. Because after all, this is Mass Effect. And Mass Effect's an amazing franchise. So, while I get myself prepped for another hour of getting frustrated, <laughs> and, you know, I must admit, I am looking forward to some of the loyalty missions. So I'm glad that they brought those across. So, while I resist the temptation just to pick up Baldur's Gate 3, I'm going to press on. And in the meantime, why don't you check out the videos on the screen now? It was a wonderful chat with some excellent guests about the indoctrination theory. So don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Commander.